says the actual finishing point is a bar hang bar in Heilong Bay. Vietnam's biggest surprise. It's very, I've, I've gone with the Minsk principles of simplicity, you see. I have a rudder steerable from the bars, cables, and then it's just a chain drive down to prop and I'm away. And that's just the standard pedalo sort of... Yeah, this is just a pedalo with a few extra floats on it. I'd been even more ingenious, turning my Vespa into a Mississippi-style paddle steamer. Now, as it turned out, my simple plan was very difficult because the Vespa weighs 940,000 tonnes. So I've needed four canoes full of foam. The main problem, though, is that with cracked ribs, I couldn't operate the kickstart. Could you start my engine for me? Because my right, neither of my legs are working. Yep. As you're injured, I'll reduce the price. $900,000. It was time for the off. It's working! I have propulsion! Hey! But then, in true Top Gear amphibious tradition, it all went wrong for James. First, he crashed into me. Go away! I'm trying. Why are you doing this to me? It's that way, you blithering idiot! Then he crashed into some netting. Oh, bloody hell! And then, as Hammond and I got going... Yeah! Once you got it going, it's like water skiing! <laughs> he sank. No! No! Cock! Why has it done that? As his boat was towed back to shore, Richard and I thought about going back to help. But we didn't. I did not expect anything like this. It's magnificent. James, meanwhile, on the beach, in what can only be described as a crashed airliner, a scene from Lost. Well, what I've done is I've found Hammond's spare pontoons from the workshop just over there. I've employed these local blokes to use the best traditional Vietnamese boat building knot technology to lash it all together. It gives me more buoyancy, stops the stern falling into the water, stops it filling up. On the putt, putt, putt away, off I go. But I have got a lot of catching up to do. Out in the bay, there were problems too. My Vespa had stalled and I needed Hammond's legs to kick it back into life. Ow! Ah! Ah! Right, I'll get on my wasp. That was truly ridiculous. Well, all we've got to do is get back to yours. Oh! Arsing hell! We're going well so far. Yeah, it's going very well. Half an hour later, my new improved boat was ready, so I set off in pursuit of the others and the elusive bar. Come on! 1,969 islands in here. Bar hang. Hello, bar hang. Jim, bar hang. I think he thinks we're idiots. Come on! Yes. Where'd they go? We'd got desperate and had even resorted to looking in caves. You know when Attenborough travels the world and goes to incredible natural sites like this? Yeah. He doesn't usually pitch up on a homemade amphibious scooter. Uh, no. In a cloud of two-stroke smoke. No. And that's where he's been going wrong. It's not a big motorcycle, just a groovy little motorbike. It's more fun than a barrel of monkeys that two-wheel bike. OK, if you've just tuned in to Britain's favourite car show, <laughs> what's happened is Richard and I have driven into a cave looking for a bar that isn't here, and we have no reverse gear. Still, could be worse. God, that was going so well. My traditional Vietnamese fishing knots have come undone, and my centuries-old fibreglass outrigger has drifted away. This is gonna work. After a 1,000-point turn, yeah. Jeremy and I were out of the cave. I wasn't worried, I wasn't scared. And with only a few hours of daylight left, we really couldn't afford any more.